And I welcome to Fem Word of Faith Family Church Tuesday night prayer night. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the prayer of praise, worship, and thanksgiving. Um, a lot of this comes from Brother Hagen's um, prevailing prayer. He wrote a book about prevailing prayer. And then Joyce Meyer wrote a, a book about simple prayer. And so the source of the, of the person who wrote this comes comes from those two. Um, Kenneth Hagin said, As yielded hearts pour out praises to God, the Holy Spirit will manifest himself in their midst. So just talking about uh, our fellowship, God created us for fellowship, right? We all know that, for his pleasure. Um, even though he wants to meet our every need, he also created us so that we would spend time with him. Prayer, praise, worship, and thanksgiving are some of the simplest prayers. And sometimes we, I don't, I don't know if I ever really considered praise and worship as a prayer, right? Sometimes you can't, but more and more we're learning that. But years ago, I would never have thought praise, worship, and thanksgiving were, were prayers, right? They will release great power in our lives by using them. You may not have considered your praise and worship as to be prayers, but they are because each of them is expressing your heart to God in a way that you communicate with him. When using the terms praise, praise, worship, and thanksgiving, we're referring to something that's much deeper and more heartfelt than many of us do in church. We're talking about communicating with God with all our hearts in total honesty and great passion. And that's true worshipers. That's the true worshipers that do that. Trying to define praise and worship and thanksgiving separately is a challenge, this person says. So for the sake of simplicity, let's talk about praise. And that's our and we all know this, that praise is our response to God for what he has done. And uh, then our worship is a response to who he is. Praise can be considered to relate to God's acts, while worship relates to his character. And thanksgiving can be described as being grateful and acknowledging his acts and his character together. We must know that praise, worship, and thanksgiving are powerful. And we're learning that, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. um, Probably years ago, we didn't realize how, how powerful they were. And we should yearn to see greater respect for our praise and worship in our services. Yeah. Knowing the power of praise and worshiping God and what it will do in our services. We should respect the times of praise and worship as much as we respect the word of God being, being taught. Let us lay aside our problems and our pleasure pressures and be filled with praise, worship, and thanksgiving. Singing or shouting praises can break the power of fear off of us. They help us to get rid of doubt and unbelief, and we know that. If you, if you praise and worship, sure. that happens. And shouting, clapping your hands, raising your hands, all of that um, gets rid of fear. It will drive away the spirits that are not of God. Because Satan hates worship. He hates people worshiping God. The spirit of fear attacks us by giving us thoughts that make us afraid. And we need to say something like, I praise you, Lord. I magnify your name. You're worthy to be praised. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you. There's nobody like you. And, and how many times? That's what we say, right? That's, that's what, we, what do, we say. Yeah. We can use those words of words. Words of warfare, and they are words of warfare anytime. We don't have to be in church service. We can be in our cars. We can be walking. We can be, we can be at work and say it just loud enough that you hear it and God hears it, right? We can use those words anywhere and anytime to defeat Satan more quickly um, than by singing a song. Than by we, if we sing a song. We can defeat the enemy more than by faster than worrying about what, what we're, we're yeah. thinking about. Yeah. Find 
Webb's Dictionary describes, um, defines praise as telling a tale or a narration. In other words, praising God is simply recounting or telling aloud the great things he has done. Praise opens an, a spiritual, ap, a, a, creates an opening in the spiritual atmosphere for which enables people to hear the word of God. It takes our focus off of us, and it puts our focus on him. Um, just a few things, because this is fairly uh, long. Um, the worship, it says, defining worship of God, it, it, that is nowhere defined in scripture, worship. It's probably not defined because it cannot be defined. Worship is so deep, it's so precious, it's so awesome, and it comes from such a deep place within us. It it's such a powerful outpouring of our hearts toward the Lord, mm -hmm. and it represents our love, our gratitude, and our devotion that we can't put into words. Wow, Human language is not rich enough to describe everything that true worship is. In fact, worship is so personal, so intimate, that maybe we should not even attempt or to, to define it with our words, right? Because right. sometimes, a lot of times, in true worship, you don't have words. There are no words in the English, English language, and that's why, thankfully, we have, we have the Holy Ghost, and we can pray in tongues, and we can sing in tongues. However, in the absence of a definition of worship, um, Vine's exploratory dictionary of Old and New Testament words does say that worship is not confined to praise. It may be regarded as direct acknowledgement to God. And I like this. It says, some sources say that worship means to kiss. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which connotes fun. great affection and intimacy for, for the Lord. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name, and bring an offering, and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. That's First Chronicles 16.29. The posture of power. Like praise, worship is so much more than just singing songs. Worship is your condition of our hearts, and it's a state of mind. We can be worshiping passionately without even sing singing a single note. Mm. Worship is born in our hearts. We were made to worship. It fills our thoughts and it expresses through our mouths and through our bodies. We can worship God by dancing, by clapping, by lifting our hands, by playing instruments, giving offerings, marching, or just sitting quietly. Our posture is often used, uh, the posture that's used most of the time in worship Prayer is kneeling, right? And kneeling is a posture of humility, but it also is a posture of incredible power. An act of humility, kneeling affects us in a positive way because it allows us physically to express our heart's cry to the Lord and our total dependence on Him. Wow. And this gentleman says, a believer filled with worship is Satan's worst nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> All of us should develop those habits yes. and remember the devil hates praise and worship because he's defeated by it. Put your heart into worship. Um, e. M. Bounds says, religion has to do with everything but our hearts. That is true, but equally true is the fact that true wish worship has to do with our hearts more than anything else. Obviously, not everybody who appears to be worshiping is a genuine worshiper. And I heard Nancy Dufresne, and I was trying to think that it was Nancy Dufresne told the story, and I don't know where she heard it from, if it was from Kenneth Hagin or not, but they were in a group of people with a lot of pastors and people in this group, and everybody had their hands raised, and this one gentleman or one lady was talking to God and, and she said, isn't it wonderful 
how many people in this room, and it was a it was a big room that were people were worshiping and their hand their hands up and and the Lord told her He said, "There's two couples, and or something to that effect, two couples that are genuine yeah. worshiping the Lord." So it's like 150 yeah. couples there. Like it was it's like, really just a couple yeah. that were really. Worship in spirit and truth is so much more than, a, than learned behaviors or habits. It causes us to go to a certain place at certain times. Walking into a church building and kneeling at a certain time and standing, repeating the same phrases and reading from a book, and memorizing stuff and actions that are not, are not sincere, they that doesn't make us worshipers. Some churches don't use worship books or prescribed forms of worship. In some places, we can be t tempted to think I'm worshiping because I'm singing. I'm even clapping, so I'm really worshiping when I'm clapping. But those things are not worship, and they'll say, come from the heart. And it's all in the heart, right? That's what true worship is. We're focused on Him. Like Pastor says, how many times when you're worshiping that you're pulled away from focusing on him? Right? It's many times that, that if you don't consistently think, like your mind just goes everywhere, but we focus on him and we don't give him just lip service, but we give him our hearts. Thanksgiving is an expression of true heartfelt for God. Uh, thanksgiving should be part of who we are deep down in our hearts. It's a type of prayer and it should flow out of us. It's a natural way. It's a pure way. Being thankful does not merely sit and that we just sit and think. Think of at the end of the day what we have to be thankful for. Um, I mean, I've heard pastor, I've heard people say every all day long, you're just thanking the Lord. Mm -hmm. Like, if something, if I do something, like, if I get over to Dope Town on a bad stormy day, I thank the Lord yeah. the whole way over, right? Um, like, many times you thank him for just, like, for getting up in the morning, for just everything. Like, he's working in our lives. He allows us to get up the next day. Even our breath, our next breath, is, is he gives it to us. And this is a part about God's will. It says you may not, it says most Christians, we're all looking for what God's will is for our lives. And um, this gentleman says you may not know whether or not what his will is for you. And you might not know if you're to move to Minnesota or where you're supposed to send your kids to school or whether you're supposed to get the lead role in the Easter play. But one absolute way, way to know and obey God's will for your life is to be thankful. So he says that if we're thankful, then we're in God's will. Being thankful all the time, no matter what you're going through, you're, you need to be thankful. An attitude of thanksgiving. He said, even in the difficult times, you will develop and maintain an attitude of thanksgiving. You will be in God's will. It tells us in, in that scripture, 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, in everything give thanks. Right? Close the door on complaining. Uh, e. M. Bound says, Gratitude and thanksgiving forever stands opposed to all of the murmuring of God's dealings with us and complaining. True prayer corrects complaining. So when we're truly praying the right way, and then we're, we're not complaining. And it promotes a gratitude and thanksgiving. That's true prayer. When we maintain an attitude of thanksgiving, we close the door to complaining. Because you can't complain and be and be thankful at the same time, right? It's true. true. Complaining can be considered evil. And it allows the devil to bring destruction into our lives. 
Thankfulness opens the door for God to bless us. Amen. And there will be no room for complaining. Giving thanks is important. It's so important to prayer because like praise and worship, it's something God responds to. When we give thanks, he responds to that as well as when we praise and worship him. And I think that's about all. It just says, examine our lives. Pay attention to our thoughts and our words and see how much thanksgiving we express in the day. It would be something that we could we could uh, just do in our own lives to see if we're complaining more or if we're praising more and we're being grateful. If you want a challenge, just try to get through an entire day without uttering one word of complaint. But mostly important, develop an attitude of thanksgiving in every situation. Be outrageously thankful and watch as your intimacy with God increases as he pours out greater blessings. That's a word right there. Amen. Very good.